Oh my god, I haven't pre-washed it. Why do I always do this? Why don't I just pre-wash fabric as soon as it enters the house? Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. So a few weeks ago I posted a video where I went to my local fabric store and I found some wool and so obviously, well, technically I found a skirt. It just hadn't been made up yet. Well, <laughs> the same thing happened again. How strange. I went to a fabric shop, I found a fabric that I liked, and now I'm gonna make a thing. So that's what we do here. <laughs> we sew and we drink coffee. <laughs> okay, so I actually bought the fabric a couple weeks ago, but unfortunately I've been really busy with other things and I haven't really had the time to go into it. Oh my god, I haven't pre-washed it. Why do I always do this? Why don't I just pre-wash fabric as soon as it enters the house? Well, I guess I'll be pre-washing the fabric today. But I can get started on it anyway. Let me tell you a little bit about my idea. So I thought, do you ever like just come across fabric and then sort of it forms in your head uh, into a thing? I often do that if I find a fabric that really speaks to me. And this was yet again a discounted wool in the bargain bin. So I managed to pick up a piece uh, that was one and a half meter long and then one bit that was one meter long. Um, it's a really nice wool. Well, I'll show you. To, I'll show it to you in a minute. But in my head, I don't know why it came into a really nice winter dress, sort of a pinafore kind of style with a V-neck. But the idea is to make a sort of a structured bodice, but not very structured. Just sort of, you know, a straight. I guess sixties inspired. I've never really gone into the sixties, but I did watch The Queen's Gambit like everyone else. <laughs> so that kind of inspiration, and then. For the skirt, I'm thinking a full skirt, either panelled or a circle skirt. Um, but now I'm wondering if a circle skirt will just have too much fabric. Because usually, I did a little research into pinafores, and what I could find is that usually they're a one-piece dress that you can wear over other things. Um, there are many different styles. There are like fitted ones, there are ones with like a bib front, there are ones with a v-neck, um, all kinds of different styles. So this is the fabric. Isn't it beautiful? So this is 100% wool. It was in the discounted bin. Uh, the one and a half meter bit was 22 pounds, um, which is still a bit steep, but originally it was 45 pounds. Wool is just so expensive. It's just a, it's such a good winter fabric. And then the one yard remnant was 15. So, oh my God, maths. 37 pounds for fabric for one dress is a bit steep, I'll be honest. Um, but hopefully I won't need anything else and I can use everything from my stash. So I'm anticipating any additional materials that I need will be buttons for a side closure, which I have in my stash, and maybe some interlining fabric for the bodice, just because this is a nice wool, but it is quite drapey. I don't know if you can kind of see online, um, online, <laughs> on video. But I think for a nice fit on the bodice, especially knowing my dimensions, I think you will need an extra underlayer. So I think I'll just dig out some cotton twill or maybe even some heavyweight linen from my stash and use that. Should I use linen or cotton twill? Mm, it's so sad that even when I start a project with a solid idea, I still have so much indecision. <laughs> Libras, am I right? Um, yeah. So I think the first steps I'll do is I'll pre-wash the damp fabric. It is wool, so you have to be careful with that. But I'm just going to pre-wash it on my machine in the wool setting, um, and then let it dry naturally. And then because I'll, this this I mean this dress will need to be machine washable. I don't wash clothes by hand usually. I don't have the time for that or the patience or the will to do it. So yeah. So while my fabric is pre-washing, what I can do is start working on the dress itself. So in terms of patterning, I thought I'd just drape this and I'm going to show you how I do my draping. But what I can do is get a rough shape on it through draping and then use that to make a mock-up to fit the bodice. I will not be making a mock-up of the skirt. If you're new to this channel, I do not make mock-ups of skirts because they consume a lot of time and material and I can't be bothered. So let's get to it. Hello friends. Oh, this is not a good angle. Okay, hang on. Okay, so we are going to start on the pinafore dress and I'm just going to give you a really quick rundown of how I usually drape. So this is my dress form, as I mentioned in the intro, or maybe I've cut that out, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't fit me. But it's what I have right now, so that's going to have to work. The first thing you want to do is to make sure you put whatever undergarments you're going to be wearing with the thing under it. 
So I've just put a bra on it, like an old bra. Um, and that's just to make sure that you're draping over the correct shape. Um, so this is just a modern undergarment kind of situation. And then you want to get yourself a piece of fabric. So traditionally, draping, mocking up, all that kind of stuff is done with calico. It's like a, an unprocessed, really simple type of cotton. Uh, the other thing is that you kind of want to use something that's the same weight as your final fabric. I usually don't have that luxury, I just use whatever old pieces of fabric I have. In this case, this used to be an old pillowcase from when I was a teenager. So that's what we're going to be using today. Uh, and so what I usually just do is I get, I actually prefer to work, I know professionals work like with big pieces of fabric, but I prefer to work with small pieces of fabric. I just find it easier to maneuver and manipulate around the dress form. So then all you want to do is, so I usually also only drape half of the pattern. So, wow, my dress room is very bright, okay. Um, so like I only drape half of the pattern. And so the first thing I usually do is I find a center front and I lay my piece of fabric on it. The other thing you want to keep in mind is grain. I've got my grain line running this way, vertically across it. Okay, so I just, pin my fabric so that it's straight on the grain across the center front there and then I just sort of smooth it out towards the shoulder and pin and then I need more pins one second you just sort of smooth out the fabric uh, okay so I smooth it over towards the shoulder and depending on how much fabric you have up here you might have an issue where it wrinkles that's okay, don't worry about it. Also, disclaimer, this is the fast and loose way <laughs> if you're self-taught. I'm not a professional. I do not have sewing training. This is just me trying to figure it out. Okay, and then the other thing I try to do is that I sort of orient the fabric so that it's, um, it's back up to the straight of grain on the side seam. And then I just pin that down along the side seam this and and then you can see obviously there's some issues here but then what I just do is I pin out this excess fabric just kind of wherever I want it to so the thing is about this um, top is that I don't actually want any darts in it so I'm just going to take out this excess fabric in sort of a dart way but then I'm going to manipulate the pattern to not have any darts. We can take out in the form of a dart. So the other thing I'm gonna do now, actually I'm just gonna cut around the armhole because sometimes this fabric, you can see that it drags down and makes it harder to manipulate that there. So I'm just gonna And then the other thing you want to do is you want to take a pen or a pencil or whatever you're comfortable using. I'm going to be taking a Sharpie, if I can find one. Here we go. And then I'm going to feel, try and feel this seam here, which is my center, center front. And I'm just... Again, um, this is like just just getting it done, you know? Okay, and then once you've got your basic fitted shape, you can draw your style lines. I know some people use like tape and stuff to do it properly, like the couture way underneath. Um, but all I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna try in my head to picture where I want the V to look like and then just draw it, I guess. I'll be fine. Very simple shape. Um, all the sort of complicated stuff will be just removing the darts. Um, but yeah, I think that looks quite nice. Okay. So I wasn't planning on filming today, so please excuse, but I'm just quickly fitting the mock-up. And I wanted to show you because you've said in the past that that's helpful. So 
here it is. There are a few things wrong with it. Let me just grab a Sharpie. So, um, I actually forgot to do the button overlap, so I just had to pin this with a half an inch seam allowance at the side. Uh, I think the waist is a little big, so I'm going to be taking it in, maybe by half an inch on each side. Um, and then, oh, I hadn't even looked at the back yet. Okay. The other thing I've noticed is that the waist is a bit long at the front. So, my natural waist is a bit more. up here yeah I think that'll be fine the other thing I want to do is to bring up this V by about an inch I think so I'm just gonna write that on there so I don't forget and then the other thing you can see is that because it's such a deep um, neckline there is some gaping and some warpling here something that I've noticed that helps a lot on my body it might not work for you is to angle this strap so the shoulder strap instead what I'll do is instead of it being a straight seam at the top at the front I'm gonna angle it so that it's shorter on the inside which means that the shoulder seam will naturally hold this a little bit taller and then the other thing you can do is when you're making it you can run a little bit of twill tape along the neckline and just sort of um, gather it to it or like hold it really taut so it keeps it into shape um, I'm going to try doing that as well and that should hopefully solve any of the problems. Let me just have a quick look at the back because I actually hadn't looked at it yet. So I actually think the back is okay too. Um, you can see there's a little bit of gaping along the V but I think that'll be fine uh, by doing the same things I just described and yeah so what I think I'm going to do is make these pattern alterations and I might make a new mock-up. I might not. We'll see. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a really quick update. Uh, I have just interlined my wool bodice pieces with just some uh, heavier weight linen that I had at my stash. I just ironed both pieces separately and then laid them flat and basted it with large basting, basting stitches to treat it as one piece of fabric. I've done the same to the back, which is over there. And then I've got my cutout skirt just hanging overnight to make sure that it stretches on the bias as much as it needs. The next step is actually to... I'm going to sew up the shoulder seams. Then I'm going to uh, turn in the seam allowances on the sides. And then, and then I'm going to get some thin tape and try to uh, stabilize this neckline and the back as well. And then I might make some facings for the front and back because I think that'll be the easiest way to finish it. And maybe the armhole if I have enough fabric left. So let's go. Okay, so I finished the sort of stays. Um, it's called a stay on the neckline of the bodice and I just wanted to show you a bit more about it because I think it's a really interesting thing and I find v-necks very difficult <laughs> so I thought this might be helpful so actually on page 55 of this book which is couture sewing techniques I do rather like this book there is a whole section about staying a seam I did a slightly altered version of this where I tried on the bodice and then I sort of with my fingers pinched the excess so it laid flat on the bust and that was about two centimeters on each side. So then what I did was I ran a row of gathering threads along the neckline, this is actually the back, um, and just pulled it up enough to so shorten it by that much. And then I sewed on this tape. 
And then I re pressed it really well. So you can see that it doesn't really look like gathering anymore. It's just sort of eased in. And I'll show you the front as So the inside just looks like this. Oh, that's out of shot. It just looks like this. And then the front looks like this. So you can see it's kind of just been eased in rather than gathered. So the next step is to add the facings. And I'm not sure, they don't actually mention this in the book. But obviously I've done this in the seam allowance, so I hope it still works without that half an inch that they'll take to take up the facings. So I wanted to give you an update. All I've done since I think the last clip was to baste the top to the skirt across the waist and then I tried to figure out the closure. I really think I should have thought of this ahead but I didn't. So all I had originally done was I gave the skirt when I cut out cut it out I gave it a one inch seam allowance which actually was really dumb because I would have needed more anyway but it ended up being really big. Um, I don't know but the I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Um, so what I did was I measured down from the uh, from the bit where they meet four inches and I cut a slit and this is so that uh, it'll go over my bust because my bust is wider than my hips and also um, these, this will have buttons so there is quite a big overlap here. Let's see if it works and it doesn't look awful. <laughs> Hello team. So just to update you, I have finished the armholes of the dress the same way that I finished the sides by turning the linen underlayer under, under, under by half an inch and then the same to the outside and just whip stitching it by hand. It's really quick and reduces bulk. I like it. I thought about adding a facing but that was more fabric and the shoulder seam was already messy and thick and I was like, mm. so here we are. Now I tried it on and the one thing I'm still quite unhappy with is the length so I think it would be a lot nicer if it was about six to seven inches longer so it would be like lower calf kind of region. Um, however as I mentioned I didn't have enough fabric to cut the circle skirt any longer and I could have tried to do like panels like I did for my witchy uh, grey dress. I'll add a photo here so you can see those panels probably would have worked but at the time I was no, not into it, whatever. I do kind of regret that, but I think we can make it work. And basically what I've done is I left, I laid out the leftovers that I have because the bodice actually only needed a tiny little bit of fabric and it doesn't have any sleeves. So I laid out the rest of my fabric and I thought originally that I would like to do a, a seven or eight inch wide strips on the bias so that there was like a contrasting grain around but then I realized the skirt itself is on the bias so <laughs> there'll be bits where it might match up I don't know the, the original thought kind of went weird in my head I just measured the skirt hem and it's five meters <sighs> circle skirts man they're kind of witchcraft So I wanted to give you an update. I feel like I say that every time I turn on the camera. But I did some work last night because I like working in the nights but I was in my PJs and the light was terrible so I didn't actually film any of it. But uh, here's a couple of the things I did. I marked out the buttonholes and I sewed on buttons. Originally I wanted uh, wooden buttons but I didn't have any that were big enough in my stash and I want to wear this dress in three days 
no, what day is it today? Five days, but I'll be travelling soon and I there's no haberdashery near me. There just wasn't enough time to get new buttons in. So I've put in these uh, really beautiful Mother of Pearl um, buttons that I got recently. And I'm actually really, I think they look nice. Uh, and then I did the buttonholes. I regretted my life decisions because <sighs> I always think buttonholes are for whatever reason easier, but then the machine always messes them up. And then we get this atrocity. Hang on, let me show you. Oh, it's just so ugly. <sighs> Look at it. I couldn't get it to work on that bottom one and then I had to actually just finish it off with a zigzag stitch instead of the buttonhole function because it just wouldn't do it. It's so ugly, but hopefully it won't be too noticeable when it's actually worn. Then the other thing I did was I cut out the pockets. Uh, I had to use the last little scraps of fabric and then I used some interfacing on the uh, inside. And at the moment it's just basted on, but I'm going to go ahead and top stitch around the edges here. This is basically the same method I used for my vintage circle skirt, so I'll insert that video down below in case you're curious to see a bit more about that process. It's a really simple thing to do. And what else did I do? I sewed up the hem, but again, that wasn't really a new technique in any way. I just sewed it up with a herringbone stitch there. And then the last thing I also have to do is to sew down. So when I was sewing on the facing, I put a linen tape in here because I thought it would help stabilize the bias edge of the circle skirt. I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it, but it was the only way I could think of doing it. Again, remember, I'm not professionally trained. I just thought if I didn't try to stabilize that edge, it might sag over time and then bits of it will be longer, especially because the facing is a bit heavier than the actual skirt itself. So yeah, and then I've just pinned down the bottom edge because if I sew that down by hand, then it encases that seam so it's really nicely closed in and finished. But that's an optional thing, the dress is wearable without it, so that can be the last thing I leave to do. Uh, so right now I'm actually just going to add one last buttonhole to the slit in the skirt beneath the waist. Um, I was originally just going to do a, a snap, but I think a buttonhole would look really cute. So I'm going to do a button and a buttonhole. And that should be it for now. Is that it? I feel like I had something else to do. We'll see.